Hello, everyone. Welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. We've got breaking, huge Marvel Snap news that we absolutely have to talk about. Then we're going to review the spotlight catch of the week, Martyr, Gene, and Spider-Man 2099. I want you to watch, so I'm not telling you not to watch, but Martyr sucks, y'all. I think she might be good. I'm going to tell you when I think she might be good. It ain't now, but I think she might end up eventually being good. We'll talk about that as we get further. We got news to get to, but before we get there, I'd like to invite you to hit that sub button, ring that bell, leave a comment. We bring you more brand new decks than anybody. We give you pro tips, bundle guides, giveaways. Literally, tomorrow's video starts our giveaway for this month. Don't miss out. We're giving away, as always, 15 season passes for the next season starting tomorrow. Hit that sub button, ring that bell. Don't miss out. We got you covered for everything you need in Marvel Snap. But we got to talk about the news first. Bite Dance uh, and Newverse are to leave gaming. They are the publishers, not the designers, not the owners, not the creators of Marvel Snap, but they are the publishers of Marvel Snap. Marvel Snap immediately upon this announcement released a statement at five twenty in the morning, which is like two in the morning since they're West Coast people. For them, um, dear snappers some of our players have expressed concerns regarding reported structural changes in newverse we wish to thank you for your concern and assure you that regardless of any changes at newverse snap will continue to operate and flourish in the future Ooh. i think that's mostly true i think that the our immediate statement is mostly true um snap is very likely going to have to although not immediately because they're only stopping working on new games by december right so new games won't be worked on Snap will still be supported for the time being while they attempt to move the asset of publishing it. So it's not immediately going to lose its publishing. All that said, that publishing is very likely to change. Is that going to be bad or good? I can sit here and doom and gloom you. I can tell you, Newverse wanted to be making more money about the game. The way Roy phrased it is Newverse wants it against an in. While Marvel Snap is ex- extremely successful as a card game, it's in fact the most money-making digital card game in the space, it's not Genshin Impact. And if that's what Newverse wanted, it didn't succeed. Is there a publisher that will be happy with where Marvel Snap's output is? Maybe, maybe not. Um, Marvel Snap is making X amount of dollars. We know it's making something like $100 million so far, right? We don't know what their overhead costs were. We don't know what their internal projections are. We don't know what that means for their initial investors. We don't know how much they owe to initial investors that they have to pay back. Maybe we've blown those out of the water. Maybe we're coming up far short of our projections. We have no way of knowing that. There is no way to have a real opinion on this. No matter who's giving you an opinion... Unless it's unless they spoke to Ben Brode or spoke to Glenn or spoke to Steven or spoke to one of the higher ups at Second Dinner, there is no way to have a real opinion on this right now that can be firm at all. So you're going to see a lot of hot takes. I bet you you've seen a lot of hot take videos around. And this is huge news. This will almost certainly change the economy of Marvel Snap. Maybe they go to a company that has more overhead and wants to build a more sustainable product and everything gets cheaper. Maybe they go to a company that needs to recoup costs for the cost they paid to get the publishing rights, and then prices go through the roof. We don't know. We just have no way of knowing. And what's more, I don't think Second Dinner knows yet. I think the suddenness of this um, announcement, and I think they probably knew sooner, right? Sooner than we did. But I think the suddenness of this announcement means that they don't have an answer yet. They just know they're making money and things are going well, so they want to continue, right? Let's hope it continues in a way that's friendly. for them. And then I'm going to leave this subject with one of my favorite quotes. This is from Mickey Rivers, a former baseball player. Whenever I start to stress myself out, remember I'm a union person, I'm a teacher, I'm a parent, I live in America in 2023, there's a lot to worry about. I remember this quote. Ain't no sense in worrying about the things you got control over because you got control over them. Ain't no sense worrying about the things you don't got control over. Because if you don't got control over them, ain't no sense worrying. So I'm not going to worry about this. This is going to affect me, one way or the other. I can't change that effect on me. Lord knows I love this game. I do this every day, right? But maybe the change is good. Maybe the change is bad. I can 
I can drive myself crazy. You, dear viewer, can drive yourself crazy about this. It's not going to make what you think is going to happen or not happen any more or less likely, unless Ben's watching. Hey, Ben, how you doing? But please stay calm, chill. Hopefully, we're all playing Marvel Snap for years to come. And if not, hopefully, we'll find a new digital space we can all hang out. We have another piece of news. This one is more specifically related to the card game, and we're going to be talking about this for the next couple minutes, so buckle on in. December's got new card and spotlight changes. So what was data mined, not announced, data mined, was that in the same week Sebastian Shaw, the season pass card for December came out, we were going to get a new card for the first time ever with season pass, a new card. That card was set to be Blob. Blob was... A 6-3, when you play him, take all the other cards in your deck, get rid of them, and merge them with Blob. He gets all their power. Means he's likely to be a fairly big card. He's a big six-power finisher. Cool card. Um, that was supposed to come out the same week as Sebastian Shaw, who was 3-3. Three, three. And with that 3-3 three, three ability, he would, whenever he gained permanent power from an outside source, he would get plus two more power. So if you gave him plus one with Okoye, he becomes up no matter where he is. So if he gets plus one with Okoye, he gets plus three. If he gets plus one with Nikia, he gets plus three. If he gets plus two with Surfer, he gets plus four, et cetera, et cetera. So Sebastian Shaw is our season pass card for December. Both of those two cards were changed. Sebastian Shaw went to a three-four. Blob went to a three-four. Both cards got pumped. We'll talk about why I think that is momentarily. Blob was moved out of Sebastian Shaw's week into the next week. Firestar, 6-3, on reveal, give each card played the previous turn Firestar's power, as in plus 3 to everything you played last turn, which would mean, again, plus 5 to Shaw, was removed from the game, at least for now. It's not in the spotlight caches this coming month. And, therefore, the first season of spotlight caches were redone to be Man-Thing, Stegron, and Jeff. That's a lot of changes. I'm going to try and explain what I think happened, what I would bet happened, having paid a massive amount of attention to this game. Um, I may not know everything about the game's finances, but I've got a pretty damn good track record at figuring out what they do and why they do it. So, the patch was supposed to be today. As you're watching this, the patch was supposed to happen today. The patch is, in fact, happening next Tuesday. We know they've told us they would talk about series drops by the end of the year. My working guess is that whatever the thing they want to tell us about series drops is, it's probably also going to involve a rework of series three, because series three takes exceedingly long to get through and is an exceedingly frustrating process for a lot of players. It causes people to leave the game. So far, so good. So those two things are going to be announced, but they're going to need a major revamp, i.e. a patch. The patch gets pushed. It's the holidays. They're not ready to run it. They can't really series drop Series 4 cards because that makes the Series 3 card worse on top of the fact that they make more money by keeping things where they are. So we need a solution. That solution is coming. But the holidays are also a thing that happened, right? And when the holidays happened, everyone was off work and the patch didn't get done. So the patch was pushed a week, right? We also know that no OTAs are happening for the rest of the month. So if no OTAs are happening, it seems like Second Dinner has other things to work on. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that other thing they have to work on, that everyone's not just taking a month off. That other thing they have to work on is whatever this big change is that they thought would be ready, ideally, when they released Blob, the same week as Sebastian Shaw, with some new way to make that not onerous on players, to make that a positive for players. But that's not ready, and I don't think it will be ready until the January 7th patch now. I hope I'm wrong and it comes out the 12-5 patch. My assumption is the 12-5 patch is a lot of buffs and reworks to cards that really shake up the meta so that they can justify taking a month off. In the process of realizing they needed more time to do this, they said they don't want to do this um, blob thing, same week as Sebastian Shaw, without a proper explanation, right? So they pushed the blob out. Blob is a really cool design, really distinct. Meanwhile, everyone on Earth thinks Firestar is busted. Read the comments on any of the videos or articles about her, and you'll be like, oh, Firestar is going to be a problem. But so they came to that same conclusion. And so, because they were moving um, Blob anyway, they decided to just pull Firestar until they could get a better handle on where she fits in the meta, or release her at a time in the meta where she's no longer going to be an oppressive force. Cool? 
but um, Firestar was insanely strong with Shaw. We're now removing Shaw's giant end game play. Surfer will still be an end game play, but we had another one, a six cost one that would give him plus five. That makes him a three uh, eight already right there. And if you had a couple extra power on him, he's like a three fifteen. We know from Werewolf how powerful that is. Great. Now that'll be completely removed with no Firestar, right? So you give him one more starting power. Okay. That also makes him more likely to get shang chi um, which seems important given that they just um, nerfed Shang-Chi to only hit 10 cost or more. Same idea for Blob. I think that all what we just saw was a giant domino effect of cards. Cool. What we saw was them realizing that their big patch, their big chains, their big fix, that they want to be a big positive deal wasn't yet ready. And they realized they had a problem card. So they killed two birds with one stone. They pushed everything aside. And they'll just do like a giant change of cards to keep us entertained. And with an evolving meta over the... And evolving a new meta over the next month. I did not think they were going to hit Loki. I still am not sure they're going to hit Loki. But I would be far less surprised based on this change if they hit Loki next week than I was before. Because they need to do something to shake things up while we wait for the big change so that we're not bored in the last month they don't want a bunch of people flocking away from the game in december when they're not doing weekly otas now what this means is you've got a far worse time opening for jeff if you want him in the sebastian shaw week man thing and stegron are both series four cards they're both fine cards um stegron is underrated man thing is very underrated man thing is like actually really good and stegron is just good but jeff is like must have and you want jeff I'm telling you you want jeff it's possible they're telling us not to like go crazy to get Jeff right now because he may be coming down series or whatever other nonsense, but I think that's reaching a bit too far. And I think like we probably just want to get Jeff because Jeff is like a meta staple and a super, super powerful and important card. If you can afford Jeff, I think you get Jeff. It's worse significantly though because Blob is not also in the same spot like Ash is. I believe this is actually the second time Jeff has come out with no other new card, which is exceedingly frustrating for anyone who wants Jeff, and I do not support this idea. Ultimately, I'd rather them have the patch be done right and actually serve the community well and give us a new way to get cards than be done wrong and be something we don't like and something that needs to be changed four times again, like Spotlight Caches were when they first started. So at the end of the day, I think I'm ultimately for this change, assuming I'm right about what it was. And we'll revisit this next Tuesday when we talk about Sebastian Shaw in that video. At the same time, we should have some really good idea about what the patch is. So stay tuned to check that out again, so I'll bring that bell. Hopefully you found that interesting. Hopefully my logic made sense to you. If you disagree, let me know. But I'm pretty sure like, like all of this fits together too well with what I've been assuming for a while. Um, so maybe I'm inventing a narrative, but like I paid enough attention to Second Dinner to like usually nail these things. And now, let's get to the poopy card. Series 4, 3,000 tokens. At the end of the game, move to a location that loses you the game. This is a 1-4, which is good, but not incredible stats for a 1. Which means you are paying for a 1 that probably loses you the game. This card is bad. Um, this card is meant to mirror Captain Marvel. The idea here is that you play her on 1 with Captain Marvel, and if she moves to a place that loses you the game, Captain Marvel can fly right there to win you the game otherwise. And if she doesn't move, then Captain Marvel probably doesn't move. Captain Marvel's played after, right? She's not going to double-check after. After Marvel checks, wins you the game, and she doesn't move, and then you're fine. I think they're meant to play together. I don't think four power is enough to do that. I think if this were a 2-6 still, or a 2-5, and Captain Marvel were a 4-5, or 4-6, we'd actually be getting somewhere, and that's the change I fully expect to happen when this card is terrible and everyone complains about it enough. I fully expect Ms. Uh, Captain Marvel to go to a 4-6 and this to a 2-6 again, and at that point, these to both be good cards maybe um a one five and a sorry and a four five and at that point i think they're playable i think four is just too low and the reason i think four is just too low and four is a problem is because ant-man exists and i don't have to do work for ant-man and hawkeye exists and i don't really have to do work for hawkeye so i'm not getting enough benefit for the potential literally game losing downside here cool let's keep going these are the variants if you're deciding based on variants i will obviously be buying this dan hip variant that is what i am holding out for although that uh 
I spelled Haida wrong because apparently I did not care about Martyr very much. Again, I'm not telling you you should care about Martyr. Really like that variant. I don't like the Justin Ya or Renaud. Neither one of them have um, release dates anyway. Actually, I guess I like the Renaud a fair amount. I like the, um, it's like her logo with a skull on it on her uh, uniform. And I like that. But I'm buying the hip and then I'm never buying another Martyr because she's not good enough to do variants for. Cool. If you like these, awesome. If they convince you to buy her, awesome. Hey, if you're going to buy her, do me a favor. <clears throat> Use collector's tokens, not spotlight caches. We'll talk more about why as we go. Our spotlight cache variant is great. You can see Ronan the Accuser in the background. Um, You can see what appears to be Nebula in the background. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, we just recorded the podcast, Snap Judgments uh, podcast, which will be up Marvel Snap Zone probably tomorrow for like the last two hours. So I've been talking a lot tonight. We've got the um, Martyr Spotlight, which I think is really nice. Again, there's a hip, so I don't need to use caches, which are worth far more than 700 gold. Um, I really like this Jean Grey, but kind of whatever. And I don't really like Spider-Man, but I have the hip, so I don't have to. I also have the Midnight Suns for Jean Grey, so I don't have to worry about her either. But this is a very pretty Jean. Synergies. We have Zoo stuff, I guess. Uh, Viper stuff, I guess. I really don't like the Viper stuff. It's like, you better, like, you either give them four and then they win, or, you, like, she's probably not going to lose them the game. Cerebro 4 is likely the best home, and then the Mirrors Ms. Marvel thing we already talked about. If you'd like a deck by her, please message me on the Marvel Zone Discord. I will happily look at your connection should you get her and build you the best deck possible with her. I will also help anyone who is in the middle of their Series 3 journey with decks where possible. I'm perfectly happy to build everyone. My goal is when you message me to build you eight decks. I've done five or six over this weekend. I've got two more pending. I will find time in the next day or two, I promise. It might take me a couple days to get there, but I make sure that I help the community have things to play Marvel Snap as they develop their collection. Hopefully, the patch in a week or at the end of the month makes it so that's no longer quite the necessity it was. All right, the first deck, this is the one I think is actually good, is Cerebro 4. Um, this uses her with the other ones. You can um, Carnage, Wolverine, and they're both fours. That's the list. You get six to um, eight power on every card. That's a huge Lady Death Strike. This is the one that does the Captain Marvel mirror thing, which I think probably works really well. You put them both in the same lane, and then Martyr doesn't move to lose you the game, but Captain Marvel does move to win you the game, and an eight-power Captain Marvel is really, really strong. My whole logic here. Um, if you've got Sarah, then your last turn of um Sarah, I'm sorry, Cerebro, Mystique, and say Colleen is just really, really strong. Cerebro, Mystique, Colleen, and Cloak is really, really strong. There's a lot to like here. I think this is probably the best home for the card. Bluntly, this is the only one I'm going to play. I'm going to use this to get to my, uh, I get everything to gold border, to get her to a gold border, and then I'm done. This is really cool. This is Den's list, by the way. Den is the head writer at Marvel Snap Zone. He's brilliant. If he says this works, that shit's probably solid. Our next deck is from the genius deck builder of Marvel Snap Zone, Safety Blade. Uh, Den has, like, all the best standard list. Safety is a genius brewer. He's the only person I know that came up with, like, Loki's original lists that knew Loki was going to be busted before he was released. He's the person who created the first Darkhawk Black Bolt, Black Bolt list and the first Dracula dump list, not Dracula discard, Dracula dump. So, like, he's an absolute genius of a deck builder. Um, this is his list with Patriot. Basically, Martyr here is an extra Ultron clone. If you do, um, actually, I guess it's slightly more power than an Ultron clone, right? An Ultron clone with the Patriots, a 1-3. An Ultron clone with the Patriot and Blue Marvels, a 1-4. Martyr's an extra 1-4. Why not have an extra 1-4? This deck wants to fill every location. It uses Martyr, Mojo, um, Dazzler, and Shauna to have a lot of power. I'd probably run Kazar here over Cosmo, but what do I know? Um, I think it's fine. I think this list is really, really fine. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. I like Patriot more than most people do. I just hit infinite with a series three only Patriot deck this season. But I will probably play this because Patriot and Ultron are fun. Patriot was one of my first series three cards. And as you know, in early series three, you just kind of play what you get. So I played a lot of Patriot early in series three. I think that this is probably good. I think it probably could use a tweak or two. I don't know if Mojo's good and I don't know if Cosmo's good, but it's a good deck. Um, is Martyr better here than 
excuse me, is Martyr better here than uh, blah, blah, blah. I can't think of the stupid card's name. Ant-Man? No. I don't think so. It's still probably good. Also, I love America Chavez in this because you really want to see Ultron to turn off the nonsense. Next up, we have Shauna Zoo. This is similar to the previous build, right? Um, I threw this together based on um, Derek is a top 20 player who's in the top 20 with a Shauna Zoo deck. So I made a Shauna Zoo deck and then I just basically threw Murder. I think I took out Elsa because Elsa has anti synergy with Shauna and Squirrel Girl. Um, and uh, Shadow King should be decent here. And sorry, Martyr should be decent here. And that Shadow King doesn't bring down its power. I say it, that's the whole thing here. Um, Iron Lad's like the secret sauce to this deck. I wouldn't play this without Iron Lad, just for the record. But everything else here is really, really powerful. It's just saying, like, I'm going to build a lot of power across the board. You're not competing with Sherry Red Skull, but you'll often beat stuff like Darkhawk just by going big and wide. We have Junk. This is where everyone wants this card to be, um, where you can just Viper it over. I don't think that it's an Annihilus build. I think that's a specifically like previous to Annihilus junk build. And I think those are kind of dead in the meta because of Annihilus. Because like, what do you do as you're throwing rocks and they're throwing Annihilus at you, right? So I think this is a, sort of a dead list. I hope to be wrong because this was like the Dara list that was super duper fun literally a week before Annihilus. But I think Annihilus probably makes this a dead list. You're like Goblin, your hood are just too bad now. So if those are bad cards, then the list has a problem. But I threw Martyr in because this is where people are going to try it. And if you'd like to try it, please feel free. Final thoughts. Does Martyr look good? No. Like, seriously, no. And please don't open her for her. You're going to be sad. Um, it, I'm going to review her throughout the week. I review her in mini in miniature again Friday when I give you weekend mission decks. I will give you the best decks with her by stats for the weekend missions on Friday. And then on Monday's video... Of next week, I will give you a last day, like, oh my god, I was totally wrong, buy her. I don't think I'm going to be totally wrong. She's pretty obviously a not good card, unless they buff her. They could buff her, like, right? Like, if she's buffed, I think at a 5, she's playable. Like, I think she's, like, not terrible as a 5. I think four, the problem is Ant-Man and Hawkeye. Her next card is Jean Grey. Series 5, 6,000 tokens. Players must play their first card here each turn, if possible. Jean is underrated. She has several decent homes. Is she a meta card? No. I've won an infinity border with her. She can be good. She is mostly good because she is so rarely seen. People sort of fall apart when they see her, and she can be a good meta answer. Um, she tends to be bad right now, unless you're running her with cards like Cosmo and Echo. And even then, she's dangerous. Um, I think Jean is okay. And like I'm one of the biggest Jean fans in the game, and I think she's just okay. Grab her if you must, but I think you should probably skip her. She's a card that could really use one more power. This is the first Gene build. This is a Gene Ms. Marvel build. Basically, you go Gene Ms. Marvel, Doom, Gene Ms. Marvel, Iron Lad, whatever. And then you can use Captain Marvel, um, Doom, and so on to win the board. You slap Gene on top of Echo, and then they can't play ongoing to that game. If you're worried about Loki, Hey, here's Mobius. Um, Nebula can get nice and big if you gene in another lane. While um, while Jeff can help you fill a lane and then move it out. That's the gist. Also, like sometimes that gene lane gets really big with stuff like I don't know Iron Man and Super Scroll wins that. It's a it's a cool list. This is like an actually cool list that I enjoy playing. So if you'd like to play this Ms. Marvel list, it's got a really high win rate and it's pretty good. This is an ongoing list. There's plenty of that list with Ms. Marvel, but I wanted to give you a list without Ms. Marvel for those of you who don't have the card. So you can easily just like replace Warpath and run a Ms. Marvel version of this. This version basically says, okay, so I go Gene Cosmo. Um, and then like I can drop her if I'm not going Professor X, right? I can go Gene Cosmo um, Warpath Professor X. Or Gene, sorry, no, that doesn't work. Gene Warpath Professor X or Gene path claw and if i did that on top of an armor that's a full lane right and then i can play um orca and spectrum elsewhere and pump everything i don't know i've never liked this type of list i think this type of list is kind of bad it's from the very early days of snap gene is a decent home here though it's a nice ongoing list lastly gene is good in thanos zoo this is one of my favorite spots for her because the stones make it easy to fill her up um you 
use Spectrum to pump after, and then win that lane. Blue Marble also helps pump that lane, because R helps pump that lane. So that also, it's not a bad list. Um, Like, this kind of list is kind of why I don't like Martyr, because this is just better than basically anything you're going to do with Martyr, I think. You're just, like, you're happier to just play a bunch of ongoing cards and have Infinity Stones and so on and just win that way. Whereas Martyr requires you to do a whole bunch of extra bullshit. This is probably good. None of this is great. Gene is at best a good card. But it's good, and it's fun. So if that's a thing you'd like to play, if you like ongoing a lot, go for it. If not, don't get Gene. Next up, we have Spidey 2099. I love Spidey 2099. I think this is one of the most fun cards in the game. It is also, at very best, good. Series 4, 3,000 tokens, so also cheap to buy, so you don't need to waste spotlights. The first time a card mo this moves... Sorry, the first time this moves to location, destroy an enemy card there. Worth knowing for anyone who doesn't know, that happens once per game. I didn't say that, but the first time it moves to a location in a game, it destroys something. You can move it 15 other times. It ain't killing anything. Um, I wish I got that bump, but whatever. Uh, it doesn't, it chooses what to kill at random, which makes it often a frustrating card, especially in this junk meta. But 4-6 isn't bad, and if you kill even a Viper with it, it's now a 4-9, and 4-9 is great. This is the single best deck for Spider-Man 2099. Um, you need Werewolf by Night to make it work. But basically, you say, okay, so I've got all these move cards because I want to play um, Human Torch. I want to play, um, I want to pump Craven. I want to play Werewolf, right? So you just throw Spider-Man 29 in there because why the hell not? Your basic game plan here, like your best game plan here, is to um, go like as early as possible, Iron Fist into Human Torch into Ghost Spider, and then you Beast or Falcon that back after you play Werewolf, and then you do that all again, and your Werewolf is huge, and your everything else is huge, right? And then if, like, Spider-Man's 29 is not a part of that best play, but if Craven was thrown in there somewhere, and the, or you Heimdall it at the end, that's great, right? Like, maybe you end up with a turn 5, 29, turn 6 Heimdall, um, and the Spider-Man's 29 can kill something with your giant Human Torch, and then you win the game. Do you want the Spider-Man 2099 have to be in this deck? Nah. Like, I'm not even sure America Chavez isn't better for the consistency. But it's an option. Another move deck. Um, obviously, 2099 is a move card. It goes in move. This is move wave. Basically, the idea here of wave is that you can spend the last turn going um, Goliath, and, so Goliath and Jeff or Goliath and Silk. Um... 2099 is only really movable here by Ghost Spider. I don't like him in this list, but it's a reasonably high win rate list, so there's something cooking here. Again, a 4-6 just isn't terrible, right? And there's enough locations that move that you're not, like, super sad to just be like, sure, sure, sure. I'll drop him on a Craven, and then everything will move to the right on turn 4, and then you kill something, and that's fine. Is he needed for this list? Again, nope. Pretty sure Miles is just better. That's the story of 2099's life conclusions so martyr sucks gene is mid and 2099 is underrated and doesn't have a great home because he doesn't have a way to move himself which is like the important key for move cards that they have a way to move themselves is like really what makes the best of them the best think silk werewolf by night um spider-man so all of this being the case save your keys this week please if you have Jeff, that means you get two weeks of save keys and you can get to the what you should always get to before you open, four keys, and you can start to stay ahead of keys as necessary. Cool. Please don't open this week. If you have tokens and you must buy Martyr, fine, I guess. Check back Friday in case I'm wrong. Check back again Monday for an absolute final, like, oh shit, something happened. But we'll see. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the takes. I'll see you tomorrow for yet another snap take when we begin our giveaway.